I'm here in Metagoy and I'm with, what's your name? Jim Brown. And um, we all know where you're from, but still say you are from? Ireland. Ireland. And so many people talk about you. What happened in your life that you became what you are now? Jesus told me when I found him that unless I gave him away, I'd never be able to keep him. So that has been my life. And the more of Jesus I give away, the more he builds inside me. Because the more proof I see in the people who I have introduced Jesus to. And the only way I can hold on to it is to continue to give it away. Have you made the experience? It seems contradictory that through pain you got closer to God personally first in your journey. There was no place to go. I didn't come to Medjugorje because I was good or because I was holy. I came to Medjugorje because there was no place to go. I, had, I came here on the 2nd of May in the year 2000. And for seven years before that, I had got sober. And I had been, been attending seven to 10 AA meetings a week. I had a great sponsor. I was in full-time uh, psychotherapy. I had five different counselors who passed me from one to another because of the depth of the pain I was carrying. And I was six constant years in psychotherapy. And after seven years of sobriety, I was only certain of one thing, and that was that I was worse after seven years in recovery than any day in 20 years of drinking. Mm -hmm. And what brought you to Metagoria? There was no place left. <clears throat> yeah, I, <clears throat> I met a guy <clears throat> and his wife, a man called Pascal and Mary Delaney, because friends of mine had seen me for the first time in about eight or nine years, and they were shocked at how badly I looked. And they brought me to a prayer meeting, and I didn't want to go. And when I was six, I was in knock with my mother and father and my sister. And it was St. Stephen's Day, and I was only six. And it was raining, it was cold, and we were hungry. And I said, Mammy, what are we doing up here? This awful cold place. And she said, and she went down on her knees on the wet ground. And she held me by the hips. And she said, James Jean, I want you to meet the mother that I can never be. And I started to cry because she had left the family for whatever reason. I know as an adult what the reason was, but the child just knew he was left there. And I went to this prayer meeting 39 years later after I'd been missing for 30 years. And on the way back, I heard the words, I want you to meet the mother that I can never be. And my friend gave me the chaplet of the Divine Mercy. And he said, if you say this, especially on Good Friday, he says, you'll have a miracle. And Jim, I'm not giving this to you, he said, because I'm holy. Mm -hmm. I'm not giving this to you to make you holy. He said, I'm giving this to you to save your life. Because he said, I never saw anybody fail so much as you have failed. And that was also because I had trusted in the occult and I had become the greatest failure in every area of my life. And I realized afterwards that God will actually attack me in my strengths to show I don't have it. Mm -hmm. And Satan will attack me in my weakness. But when somebody who was good at what they did failed, there's not many places left to go. My marriage had failed. My shoe business had failed. I was living in a small cottage. And it's not romantic, Tommy. I, Tom, I don't want you to see me looking out on the lakes of Connemara. This was cold and old and lonely and old fashioned and just done up from the 1950s. And it was a place to just go because I had no money. And the guy that was renting it to me, he was only charging me 120 pounds a month, 30 pounds a week. 
And in February, before I got to Medjugorje, he said, Jim, if you have no money to pay me, he said, I don't mind. And he said, even if you can't pay the electricity, I don't mind. He said, if you have no oil for the heating, I'll fill that tank for you. But he said, don't hang yourself in my barn. So there was either the rope in the barn and these people prayed with me and gave me a Bible and they said, you're going to Medjugorje. And I did the Divine Mercy Novena starting it on that Good Friday. And when I was on day six, I was booked on my first trip to Medjugorje. Yeah. And what happened when he came here? I found what I was looking for for 45 years. What did you personally find? Well, I said to a guy, because I couldn't take all of these people hugging each other and kissing each other at the airport at three o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> because the last time I saw that was New Year's Eve and everybody was drunk. And I said, these crowds are worse than the crowd I drank with. Look at them. They have no excuse for this insanity. So I, I wanted to get home. And I was in the house where we were brought into. And I saw a guy sitting on his own. And I said, I have to get out of here. But I want to go to where Our Lady appeared. So he brought me, it was three pounds, I'll never forget it. Because I said to the taxi man, I'm not going to pay you in case you're gone, because I said, I'm not hanging around here. And I said, I'll be down in two minutes, but I'll pay you double on the way back. And he brought me, this guy, was, his name was Kevin, and he brought me to the second station. He says, I know that Our Lady gave her first message, peace, 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 and only peace. Yeah, peace must reign between God and man and between all men. And I said to your man, Kevin, I said, say it, a Hail Mary. No, he said, you say one. And I s started to pray mm -hmm. and the tears started to fill up in my eyes. Mm -hmm. And then I heard the voice again. I want you to meet the mother that I can never be and confessions. Mm -hmm. And I ran down to the taxi guy on the main road and I paid him six pounds. Mm -hmm. And I went back up to Apparition Hill. And when I came back, all I was thinking about was confessions. And I opened the door of the house we were staying in. And there was a priest standing in front of me. I said, Father, I have to go home, but I need confessions. Come on up to the room, he said. So I went up to his room. And we were there for about two and a half hours. And I said, Father, I've just realized I'm wasting your time. And he says, what do you mean? I said, I've been in psychotherapy for six years. I have already verbalized all of this. I have already worked through all of this. He said, keep going. And what happened? The miracle. Mm -hmm. The miracle happened. When I had spent another hour getting right down into the real core of my rottenness, and he stood up. And for me to allow a man to hold me, and especially a religious, was the first miracle. And he held me in his arms and he said, James, I want to tell you that every sin you had ever committed, he said, is gone and you have been forgiven. And that's what happened. None of the psychotherapists were able to speak those words. They were able to identify the problem. They knew what was wrong. They knew why it was wrong. They knew I was reacting the way I was reacting. But there was none of them was able to put their hand in and take that pain out in the form of sin. Mm -hmm. And my life changed that minute. Mm -hmm. You never doubted that, that maybe it's not forgotten. A lot of people, they, they, they go confession and they still have it inside. For you it was... Oh, God. Maybe it was because of the length of time it was there, Tom. That, so happy that it goes. Yeah, but I knew it was gone mm. because I could have jumped over the house. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and from wanting to go home, all I wanted to do was to bring more people, men especially, who had difficulty in crying because we were told that you don't cry. And all the emotion was hemped up inside me. All the anger, all the terror, all the fear. Everything was there. And it all came out with the first confessions. 
and I hadn't uh, been to confessions for 30 years. And it's sad, but the last confessions, and I remember them distinctly, I was 15, and I felt so unwanted in my own family home that I was trying to get it out of the priest. How would I find out who my real parents were? Because I had asked my mother to help me because my father beat me so badly mm -hmm. several times a week. And I knew from listening to the, the other guys that fathers don't treat their young boys like that. So I was thinking that I was the problem and several things. But the pain left and when I was at Mass the following day and the priest said, you have to forgive. There's a guy here, he said, that has to forgive somebody who has hurt him. Mm -hmm. And I started to cry and the tears just fell down on the seat in front of me. And it was like I was looking at a video of my life and Jesus showed me all the times of joy, all the times of love and all the times of happiness. And then the strangest film came on in front of my eyes and Jesus showed me all the sacrifices that my mother and father had made for me in a very, very broken, really a war zone. And I hated, and I had started to hate my mother because it had come in recovery of all the times as a young child from the age of six that I asked her to help me. And as an adult, I know that she couldn't because she was been beaten herself. But the child doesn't know anything, only that he's there and unwanted. And I said to Jesus, I don't know where you were, Jesus, because I don't give in easy as you're probably here. I said, I didn't like that, Jesus. And I said, I don't know where you were and letting all that go on. But I said, I'm going to trust you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you permission to take all of that pain and use it for your kingdom. That's wisdom. You know, a lot of people, that's, but that's the solution. No? That's the solution to get out of it. That's what Jesus showed me as well. The pain, pray for all the people who have the same pain. And then you get out of your, your vicious circle that you don't stay Stop around yourself. You, you yeah. for the other ones. Right? And I said to Jesus that day, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd ask you now to go to my mother and father and tell them that I love them because I never did. Mm -hmm. But you still can do it now. Please told me you can always say, if they are in heaven already, you say, you know. And now you know, now you see the full picture. What would you tell people like who have that split? A lot of people have this ravaging child in them. You see them, they come to you. Well, how do they get rid of that ravage, this, this child, angry child, maybe depressed child, the yeah, old man, 52, my, and I found this child in me. I was, I was shocked when the first time I really heard it. You know, what, what would you tell people? How can they get that? Healing? One word, one solution, mm -hmm. forgiveness. Over and over again, you know, it's deep, I think, with you. With your not over and over again, Tom, but to make the decision and not leave it. Yeah. Make the decision once. Mm -hmm. It's better to make it once and stick to it, because the people who have to make it over and over again mm -hmm. really don't get rid of it. And I'll tell you why. Good. Because they have a cliche in their own head. Mm -hmm. I'll forgive because I have to, but I will not forget it. I, from the heart. I said to Jesus, yeah. I want the lot gone. You want that? Everything gone. Yeah. I said, I want to forgive. I'm not going to forgive today and resent tomorrow and tr forgive in a week's time. Mm -hmm. I entered into forgiveness mm -hmm. on that day, my second day in Medjugorje, the 3rd of May in the year 2000. Mm -hmm. I entered into forgiveness and never came back out of it. Yeah. But I think it's for people, you know, I'm a bit maybe the same over and over, and then if you don't know how it works, ask God again. It's very simple. Like Jim showed you the way now, but ask from the heart. I want to forgive from the heart. Help me. I'm human God. You have to help me in the process. And God will help. Our faith is childlike simple. It's not complicated. No? Yeah. The one thing that, uh, uh, that I don't agree with, mm -hmm. and I hear a lot of very, very mm -hmm. holy people mm -hmm. talking about you have to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, if I could forgive myself, Tom, mm -hmm. I could sit here now and listen to your sins and forgive you, couldn't I? Mm -hmm. So I can't forgive myself. You can't forgive yourself. 
and everybody thinks they can. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus can forgive sin. Absolutely. And there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. And I didn't shed a drop. Yeah. I have to ask Jesus to come into every situation because all of my forgiveness that I need for myself, it's all rooted in sin. And that's why it doesn't go away. It's an illusion for people to think they're able to forgive themselves. Because if I can do that for me, I could set up a confessional box across the road and forgive everybody and listen to the sins. Absolutely. It's, it's in Jesus. And there's a word of scripture and it says, For in Christ I, James, obtain freedom. And that's from all my sins. But I can't forgive myself for taking a bar of chocolate out of a shop mm -hmm. because that's a commandment that I broke. Mm -hmm. And I went through my entire lifestyle with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I, as I got absolution from the priest for the sins, then I got absolution for, my sin, for myself. And that's when I was able to feel the forgiveness when I asked Jesus to come into every area and forgive me of the hatred I had for myself. Yes. Every little room of our soul, you know, we sometimes hide it deep down and sometimes we don't even know, it's subconscious. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's silent. It's silent, yeah. It's a silent war. Yeah, see it in my life. Um, and you know, somebody on Facebook said, Catholic faith foremost means to be honest to yourself. Yeah. To look really what state you are in. And if you don't know, ask again, you know, that it's revealed to the Holy Spirit <laughs> to help us. I was in such a state, I didn't even know I was in a state. And the only thing I knew, there was only one flicker of hope, mm -hmm. is that I was well enough to know how sick I was. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know, as I understood that, that you said you were seven years sober, but you were in a miserable state. Was that correct? Did I understand that? Yeah. Spiritually. Because I tried to do a program of sobriety without God. Yeah. I tried to do it, and there was a higher power suggested to me mm -hmm. that the whole members of the group would be a power greater than me. And I latched into the power of a group. Mm -hmm. And really, it didn't have the power of one LED light in comparison mm -hmm. to the whole of heavenly glory shining down on me. It was only when I came here mm -hmm. and I asked Jesus mm -hmm. to take the pain that things got better. And then I brought one person in October and then I brought a few more and then I brought a few more and my business started to improve. And uh, I said to Jesus, I said, oh, I'm going to bring in Paddy mm -hmm. because Paddy was a great comfort to me because he was a worse alcoholic than I was. <laughs> and and I, used to, I used to love to look at him to think there was someone worse than me. We all do. And I said, I'll, I said, Paddy, will, it, will you come to Medjugorje? And he didn't know whether it was the far side of Cork or the far side of Italy, but he came anyway. Uh -huh. And Paddy never drank again. And when we came home, he said, I want to bring my wife, my wife and my five children. And his eldest child was too much like I was to trust him in a place of pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm not going to bring your eldest boy. Mm -hmm. And Paddy said, why not? I said, because when he goes in to town, to, into Westport, you get a phone call. Your first phone call is from the police station mm -hmm. to come in and take this lunatic home. <laughs> and I says, what will I do with a guy like that in Medjugorje? Mm -hmm. And Paddy started to cry. And he said, but Jim, he's my son. And those words just rooted me. He said, what will I do with him if you don't give him the chance that you got and the chance you gave me? Mm -hmm. So I agreed. And the morning we were leaving the airport, I had to go in three times and take him out of the bar. Mm -hmm. Now, this guy is 18 and he was drunk at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking, Jesus, I made some mistake here. 
But I noticed he was on the hills and he was at confessions and I was sitting behind him at Holy Mass and he got up out of his seat because an old woman came in at the choir box on the left-hand side and he didn't go over and point to his seat. He went over and he walked with her into the seat he had and he stood at the door at the choir box. And he hadn't talked to his father since he was 12. And now he rang me and he said, when we went home, he said, Jim, he said, I'm working with Dad. We're doing a job on the football field, but I want to talk to you. And I went down to meet him and he said, I'm going back to Jesus and Mary again. And he said, here's 500 pounds or 500 euro. And here's 700. You have to bring someone. He said, that was as bad as I was. That's what he did with his first wages. I was walking out of the church a week later and a woman came up behind me and she said, Jim Brown, you know, I never believed in Medjugorje and I've spoken against it and I've even spoken against you. And she said, today I know it's real. And I said, why is that? She said, both of my sons are at home in bed and Keith Kelly is in there in the church and I heard you brought him to Medjugorje. He didn't even have to open his mouth to convince people that God existed and that the Blessed Virgin Mary was appearing here. And then he rang me. He said, I want you to teach me how to bring 50 youngsters to Medjugorje. And then when he was 20, he did the same. And then when he was 21, I got a call from his mother. She said, we're having a celebration, will you come? And I thought, he must be 21, and I put 50 euro in my pocket. And there was a suitcase at the door as I walked in, and I said, is there somebody going on holidays? And his mother said, no, she said, it's Keith. He's joining the priesthood. And that's the day my conversion started. That's the day it started. And I tell you, the Blessed Virgin Mary gave me a fair scolding that day. She said, did you think, after what we did for you, that that young 18-year-old boy was far beyond our help? She said, you have a job to do. You have to put people on planes and get them to Medjugorje, and then you leave them to me and my son. That was the best lesson of my 23 years coming to Medjugorje. Mm. To surrender to them. No? That's what we all learn here. Our Lady and Jesus take over when they come here. No? Yeah. Unbelievable. And you brought so many. Well, I lost a bet to Jesus. This is the problem, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and I never betted with him since. Yeah. But I said to Jesus for the fun, I said, if Paddy doesn't drink, I'll fill a plane. Mm -hmm. Paddy never drank, and I had to fill a plane. <laughs> 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 and I brought, what you say. <laughs> and, and, and my first, the first group I brought was yeah. Easter Monday in 2004, yeah. Yeah. and a plane with 207 of us left Knock Airport. Look, the cold place you were with your mom. Yeah. Knock Airport. Yeah. I went back to where I was defeated mm -hmm. to start the first pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And then I... But was it a defeat? I think your mother was a wise woman. I looked at it as a defeat. Yes, you looked at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you left. What happened? You brought them over here? Oh, yeah. Where is to bring them? <laughs> yeah. 206. But, and the thing about it, that there was 206 and myself, mm -hmm. and there was 180 in Medjugorje for the first time. Wow. How was it to, to guide them or to be with them here? Yeah. I still have nightmares. That's what I thought. <laughs> but it didn't stop me. Uh -huh. But Satan tried to stop me and I brought two pilgrimages a year, every year until COVID. Wow. That's why you proclaim, you proclaim now that you say, through Christ, in Christ, with Christ I can do because you made this all this experience. With him you can do it. Because you, 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 when you speak it, it's alive. Yes. That's why, because out of all of these experiences. Yeah. Wow. 
So I learned a bit all the time, but the greatest job I was given was to get the crucifixes that I get blessed on Christmas Day, and they're blessed by Jesus and Mary in Vizca's apparition on Christmas Day, and they go all over the world. And, and, and the, see, the thing about it is that all my drinking, all my terrible life sexually, was all rooted in one thing. In pain? No. Oh. What was it doing? Loneliness. Loneliness, exactly. That is a pain. It is. But it's a, most pains you can medicate. Loneliness cannot be medicated. Only by God. Yeah. And God allowed that loneliness to become so big that there was only one answer, and that was Jesus and his mother. And it's amazing that the more I would give away of something, the less I would have. But the more I gave Jesus and Mary away, the more that emptiness just filled in and made me more complete. And now I don't have to demand anything of anybody anymore. Yeah. I think that's important to tell people I had this too. You know, I was close to Our Lady, Jesus. And I told my spiritual guide Saturday night, a lot of young men, we feel alone. And my spiritual guide said, it's strange, when you're with God, you're not alone. Something is not good here. And it's a process. People should not give up. Step by step, you open the doors of the, you know, where the pain, the loneliness is, where the wounds are. No, you had a process too. You, step by step, they came more into your life. No? Tom is 23 years trying to fill that hole. Me too. Mm -hmm. And... And there's no other answer. If there was, I would have found it because I tried everything. <laughs> so, and when I was on the, the ninth station of the cross, the last time I was here, three weeks ago, and I always believe that Jesus invites me into that station because it's where he fell for the third time. Mm -hmm. And he tells me that my great failures are the reason I'm standing there. And then he put a name on me the last time I was here. Mm -hmm. He called me, oh, happy fault. Yeah. That as a result of a disastrous life, it's all about where I am now. Yeah. And the other thing that I realized when I asked God for something, mm -hmm. that his answer is not in my time space. His answer is what's best for me in eternity. And that's what's best for me before I die. And most of my requests mm -hmm. were operating between now and the time of death. And Jesus answered that in the time of everlasting life. Yes. It's a change of perspective it's, which will happen on the journey, you know? Yeah. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And, and you pray the rosary now? I see you have the rosary with you. I never go anywhere without being able to hold the mother's hand. And I need to put my hand into my pocket and nobody knows what I'm doing mm -hmm. all the time. I just put my hand in my pocket and I, I don't have to wonder what pocket it is. I know where her hand is. Yeah. It's right beside me here. And this has been my great comfort, knowing that I have my Bible mm -hmm. in, in rosary form mm -hmm. with Jesus and Mary together in my hand. And with that, I get the words then, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. And I only have to just feel it there, like the baby yeah. that puts his hand up and feels his mother's arm or his father's arm. It doesn't matter who's there or who's in the crowd. As long as the child can feel that security, the loneliness goes, the fear goes, Amen. the anxiety goes. Amen. But I have to know it's there. And then you're alone at home. But I do put on, maybe people, somebody listen now, you can put on YouTube the rosary, maybe in Latin it's more powerful. Just let it, you know, when you are in the kitchen, wherever, listen to it. It will already change something in you, know. Yeah. And, and you, you, you are the expert for the Bible. You have a favorite Bible. Well, I wouldn't call myself an expert. And the only reason... I'm passionate about it. I am passionate, yeah. And again, it's God's humor because I had I never read a book in my entire life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even at school the Christian brother was giving out little library books because the weather forecast was bad and that time there was very few televisions mm -hmm. and he came and looked at me and he said there's no point there's no point in giving Brown a book it'll never be read mm -hmm. so I was defeated yes 
And now the hardest book to understand has become my victory, which means that God will never be defeated. But when I want to give a teaching, I would read like the, the wedding feast at Cana. I read that for three years. And then I was ready to talk about it. Beautiful, because it's all about the wedding from the beginning to the end in the Bible, isn't it? It's all about the bride and the bridegroom. Yes. And Jesus has gone overboard mm -hmm. to try to explain the relationship that I must have with him. And the Catholic Church says I can't have that directly without Mary and without the saints. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has explained because even anybody from three years of age up knows that any wedding, there's only two. And if there's more than two people in my wedding, it's overflowing. Like, and Jesus went out of his way. St. Paul said, I have to confess, I share my jealousy, the jealousy of God with you to make you brides of Christ, to promise you in marriage to Christ. And in any marriage, Tom, yep. you'll get no more than two. Mm -hmm. But Catholics tend to pack it in. It's, all, it's more like the reception rather than the marriage. Mm -hmm. yes. And I don't need a reception. I, I need the marriage. And I need the blessing. I was talking to somebody last night, and I had given a talk about this. And this woman came up and explained. You know, she said, I heard a priest mm -hmm. telling me one time, that I give my prayers to Mary, and Mary knows exactly how to present them to Jesus. Mm. I said, look, if anyone as broken as me knows exactly how to present things to Jesus. Mm. I don't want it repackaged. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, this is a different way, you know, I think, just a different ways to roam. And like, like you said, this is, this is your way, you know. When, I would say yeah, that. Catholics that don't know the scripture can yeah. be told anything. Yes, it's very important. And it says, it, says yeah, it, yeah, and the reason is because she wants us to know the truth, not the man-made rules and the, and the beautiful romantic ideas of going to Mary with all these problems and she knows how to present them. And do you know what, what Jesus showed me? He says, if you take incense, mm -hmm. it's horrible looking. It's completely and totally unattractive. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't give anything for it when you see this bit of a True. bark of a tree. Mm -hmm. But when it's tested with the flame, it's fire. it sets off this m magnificent aroma. Yes. But if you take honey, which is beautiful to look at, mm -hmm. and you test it with fire, it'll go as black as the wheels on my van. So I don't need anything repackaged. Mm -hmm. And there's only two places in a marriage, mm -hmm. groom and bridegroom. Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, bridegroom and bride. Mm -hmm. And Jesus has asked me to be a spiritual bride and not to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. And at the second coming, he said, I'll marry you. Mm -hmm. There's no need for anybody else in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And you know, important is for people, you know, on the how can they have this relationship you're talking about? You're talking beautiful about it, but a lot of people don't have it out there. It's the center of everything is this personal relationship you're talking about. How can they have it? What would you, would you give out of your experience now that, as, a, as a... I have to know who Jesus is, mm -hmm. who Mary is, mm -hmm. and who the saints are. That was the first time, thing I had to distinguish. And every morning I ask our Blessed Virgin Mary with St. Joseph, my namesake, St. James, St. Patrick, St. Martin, St. Anthony. And I ask them to do the same thing that happened and started at the River Jordan, where the first two apostles followed Jesus. And from there they went out and got more disciples. And I ask for that million of saints to go before the throne of God, to join with my prayers as I pray to Jesus. Because Jesus said, you know, and most Catholics go in to pray, and Jesus said the first word is our, second word is Father. Mm -hmm. He said, when you pray, pray like this. He didn't say... You see, when the two apostles, when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, 
They were talking to the most powerful man that had been around for 430 years. And they didn't say to John the Baptist, be sure you keep interceding for us now that we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. When they found the Lamb of God, they knew they needed nothing more. And they didn't even ask John how he was or would they ever see him again because they didn't care. Mm -hmm. And the the message from the River Jordan and in Knock and County Mayo, Mm -hmm. you follow the Lamb of God. And the first thing that Jesus said, he looked at, and when he saw them following, he said, what do you want? And he said, James, what do you want? I said, Jesus, I want to marry you. Mm -hmm. And I don't need help with that. I need Mary, his mother, and my mother to pray so that I stay married mm-hmm. yep. to Jesus. I and I want all these saints mm-hmm. and all the angels to keep praying that I stay married to Jesus, but I don't want any of them in the marriage. Mm-hmm. The marriage is full with two. And that's why Jesus talked about bride and, and groom, that there is only two. That's exactly. That's People it. seem to get the reception and bring everybody from the reception into the marriage. Mm-hmm. The reception is over, Tom. The wine ran short. A new bridegroom was in town. His name was Jesus. I became his bride when he said, James, what do you want? I want to marry you, Jesus. And the party was over and I walked with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I'll only know that true love when I let everything else go. And it's, you know, I can confirm this, the same experience I make, the closer you draw to Jesus, it has to become a love affair, a personal relationship, like I said, it has to become a marriage. A love affair, but you can only have a love affair with one person. Yes, true love wants eternity yeah, one. with one person. You one. Not, you know, and I was yeah. fooling around, a lot of people fooling around, you won't get satisfied. You look at the wrong places. But, you know, you, you pray a simple prayer. I started, my aunt said, why, why you feel lonely? My aunt is my spiritual guy. Why do you feel lonely? You are with God. It's strange. You're not never alone with God. But it's a process. You went through that process. You know, the people who are asking the saints, they go through the process. Maybe this video may help them now. And it's very simple. Jesus asks, what do you want? You have to ask something. You know, Jesus asks us, what do you want? You know, and then you, you will get answers. No, Jim, you asked at one point. You know? Jesus says, what do you want, James? I said, I want to marry you. Mm-hmm. And then you get what you have. And then Mary Mary and Joseph and all the saints pray that that marriage will stay together. Mm -hmm. That's what the saints are for. That my marriage to Jesus, Mm -hmm. that I will not enter into adultery through sin. Yeah, exactly. And um, that's what I think our mission, because you said the Catholics, you are Catholic as well, I'm Catholic. We, 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 We belong to the Catholic Church. We are not outside the Catholic Church. But it is important that this, what you are talking about, this personal relationship, this is the center of everything. No, it's not, we are not serving a God and you have to bow down and, and fulfill the fasting, this, this. If it's not from the heart, God says in the Bible, I want your heart. I want your heart. No? And you, you are, then we be on fire when we give the heart because fire, the burning bush comes into our heart. No? And... Um, what would you tell but, people? But it's, it, it, it is, and Jesus describes the perfect wedding mm-hmm. yeah. where the bride mm-hmm. submits everything yeah. to the husband. Yeah. Not a bit to St. Anthony, not a bit to Mary, not a bit here Absolutely and a bit there. That the, br- the bride, yeah. there's only two people in yeah. the marriage. Absolutely. And that's why Jesus makes it so simple yeah. to know a child three years of age knows there's only two people married. Yeah. And it says it in Ephesians Very that I submit every single possible thing to the groom. And that's not hard to do because that groom laid down his life for me. I think a lot of people have the problem that, you know, they haven't made the experience of that love, that endless love. You know, I see even in my life that step by step you grow deeper in that love, in that knowledge that you're endlessly loved. You know, I think that's a lot of people, like my brother, he said, a lot of people think that God the Father is an angry old man with a white beard. He waits for us to make a mistake and then go to hell. And he's not like that. A lot of people have a disturbed image. Somebody, a priest said, this is a diabolic image of God the Father. 
But if you don't haven't made that experience, you don't want to marry, you know. If you made the experience, but it's simply like you said, but you ask, but you'll only marry somebody who you know, yeah. and people will not know Jesus if they don't know his word yes. and they will not trust him if they don't know his word yes. therefore they're going to have adulterous relationships yes. with Saint Anthony, Saint Pio, Saint Faustina and their whole wedding becomes the reception rather than when the bride and groom go off together to That's live what, together. Uh, it can be that, it also can be sex, it can be alcohol, drugs, whatever. It can be everything. Exactly. Yeah. Internet, writing with women sexually on yeah. the internet. It can be everything. Yeah, and it is everything unless it's only one thing. Yeah. Because if I fall for everything, I stand for nothing. Absolutely. And when I stand for one thing, I fall for nothing. Yes, that's absolutely. Because at the end, we, have, we will only stand crowned for something we truly love, if not before. Yeah. Wow, and at the end, Jim, what would you tell people to close up? Why come to Metrogoy one time? Well, to use the words again from the River Jordan, when they, they said, to, they, the two disciples, and people say they don't know who the second disciple was, but he was John himself. And Jesus says, what do you want? And they said, where are you staying, Master? And there's three words, come and see. And tell Jesus what you want when you find him. Finding him is no good. He wants the answer. What do you want, Tom? What do you want, Carmel? What do you want, Mick? Rhea, what do you want? Sharon, what do you want? And he leaves that relationship up to me. Do I want a marriage? Or do I want adulterous relationships with everything and everybody and anything? And I don't, because I can tell you, I tried everything. God is good, no? No one else. No one else. And you came a long way. I would like to add something here. A wise Jewish rabbi told me the biological father is shaping the image of God the Father. And if the biological father distorted the image, it's very hard to, to get to God the Father. It can be very a long way. It was a long way for you. It was a long way for me. And just to, to, to make it conscious, maybe somebody listening now who had a father who was emotionally upset, you were hit. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was unable to have a relationship with God the Father because of the emotions that it triggered, and I couldn't get over them. And, you know, I had a, a quadruple bypass in October 2013, mm -hmm. and I asked Jesus for a family bypass. Mm -hmm. I said, can I see my family there and go around them to the throne of heaven mm -hmm. and meet my father and then come back with forgiveness? I couldn't do it the way up, Tom, yeah. because the blockage of the pain was so great that the mention of word father, I used to shiver. And I said to Jesus, bring me around my family of origin. Bring me to your father who was my father. And when I receive that love, I'll be able to return back to my own family. That's what it means. You know, when, when you are on that way, you will understand your challenges are a blessing. It's at the beginning very hard because we all go through challenges. I lost my sister, my brother, my mother. But when you're on the way with God, with Jesus, you will understand. He didn't Everything. Show you, no? Like yeah. he didn't show to you. Yeah. Thank you for that beautiful interview. Thank you, Tom. God bless.